Hello and welcome to Fallout Vault, a weekly series every Sunday in which we take a look at the world of Fallout, specifically the Vault. As Fallout 4 approaches, I'll be going through all the vaults, explaining the sinister vault experiments, how they developed and their purposes. If you guys like the series, be sure to let me know and maybe even share it around. In case you missed last week's episode, we took a look at Vault 92. This week, we'll be venturing into Vault 108. Vault 108 is located in the far east of the capital wasteland near the Corvega factory featured in Fallout 3. It's one of the most rundown vaults in the capital wasteland, perhaps meaning it's been open the longest in that area. Not a single terminal works in Vault 108, which leaves us with very little information as to exactly what happened here. Some research around the wasteland can help uncover the mystery, but first we'll head into the vault and see what's waiting for us there. The entrance to Vault 108 is infested by mole rats, but otherwise fairly barren with no real items of use lying around. However, there is a body of a man in a Vault 108 jumpsuit who has been killed recently. Inside the living quarters it becomes clear quite quickly what has been going on here. Vault 108 is a cloning facility, and the only remaining inhabitants are clones of a man named Gary. Uh, Gary. From a holodisc located in the cloning lab, we can learn about the experiment in more detail. The log is actually a transcript. Vault 108 has no audio logs, so I've just used my voice. Gary 53 is hostile toward all non-clones, as was the case with the previous 52 attempt. We may have to consider a means of disposal of the pre-existing Gary clones, as the observation rooms are getting quite full. Gary 54 exhibits no change in hostility toward non-clones. If anything, he is even more hostile. Dr. Peterson can attest to this, having been injured while examining Gary 54. Tomorrow we are going to dispose of several of the Gary clones, which will leave room for many more attempts. Every time Gary was cloned, the clone immediately became hostile to non-clones, with each one becoming more violent. The other entering the holodisc says that Gary 54 was the same way, having injured Dr. Peterson during an examination. It isn't known what happened to the residents and scientists, only that they plan to destroy the clones to make room for many more tests. As to why the Garys are aggressive, or can only say their own name, it also isn't known. They aren't completely mindless though, they seemed interested in studying non-clones as a wastelander can be found lying on an operating table in the cloning lab. They also communicate through a series of different ways of saying the word Gary. It seems the Garys never figured out a way of cloning themselves though, so there are a finite amount of them in the world, which is estimated to be around 54, though it could be many more depending on what happened after the last logs. Some Garys have been known to appear elsewhere in the wasteland, however. In the outcast outpost where the anchorage simulation is located, there is a dead body of Gary 23. Presumably he left Vault 108, was captured by Brotherhood of Steel outcasts, and some point taken to the outpost. It appears the outcasts tried to convince him to enter the simulation as he had a Pip-Boy 3000, the correct interface device, but soon discovered that he only said the word Gary and he was hostile to all non-clones. They grew impatient with him, and he was beaten to death with some brass knuckles, which can be found close by. The outcasts sawed off his arm in a futile attempt to remove his Pip-Boy. His body can be seen dumped in a corner. Interestingly, there is an audio log that explains uh, what I just mentioned in the game files that was cut from the game. I didn't know whether I should actually mention this stuff that might not be canon if it is cut, but it follows the story so closely I feel it's warranted here. Gary? Listen, son. I know Murillo was rough. I'm sorry. I really am. Gary? And, and Gary? Right. You can drop the ads now. I'm not here to hurt you. Gary? <sighs> Look, just remove the pit boy and we can part ways. Gary! Gary! You know what? Fuck this. Hand me that saw. And turn off the recorder. Some digging around in the Citadel in the capital wasteland reveals more information about Vault 108's purpose. On the Vault Tech terminal in the archives of the Citadel, where you can find many other bits of information on other vaults, the premise of the experiment was explained to study conflict for leadership and power in a vault. The first overseer was known to have a genetic predisposition for a rare form of cancer that was expected to kill him within 40 months of the experiment's inception, and positions of authority in the vault went unassigned, thus creating a conflict for power. The main power supply was also scheduled to malfunction after 20 years, while the vault was planned to be sealed for 38, and the backup power supply was intentionally insufficient to meet the vault's needs. On top of all this, the vault was given three times the normal armory stock and no entertainment recordings, 
Though having been open for so long, we don't actually see any evidence of these weapons being here. So that's really it for Vault 108. It's a shame there isn't more information to go by, but Vault 108 is something you'll never forget. A cloning facility gone wrong. A long open vault, destined to be filled with chaos, weapons and political strife, with many of the clones still alive inside. Inside Vault 108 you can find a Vault Bobblehead, and you can also find a Nuka-Cola Quantum in the entrance. That's all the info we have on Vault 108. Join me next week as we take a look at Vault 11.